Hello again, and uh, this is the second panel at our uh, at the Future Summit organized by Social Innovation Solutions. We are here with Claudia Pavarini, uh, in an energy modeler at International Ed Energy Agency. Hello. Hello. Uh, as we were talking before, uh, what are the latest scenarios that you, you, you are working on at EA? So at the International Energy Agency, in particular in the group where I work, uh, we produce scenarios to inform policymakers and people around the world about what are the implications of policies and conditions in general on the energy sector. We have three scenarios in our publication. One is called current policy scenario, which means that we consider uh, current policies that are uh, implemented in, uh, in the different countries and regions in the world. And we, then we have our stated policy scenario, which is uh, one step further. We have current policies and policies that have been announced. Okay. And the third one is called sustainable development scenario, which is a scenario that uh, shows uh, what we will need to do, what the energy sector will need to do in order to, uh, to be compliant with the uh, long-term climate change objectives, what will need to happen to have a, a full energy access, which means electricity access and also uh, modern access to services in general. And third, also reduce dramatically air pollution, which is a big problem in many re regions in the world. So, so what are, uh, as for the, the latter scenario, uh, what are the, the most important steps that we have to take in order to have a sustainable uh, energy the production? The one of the, of the slides that actually had the more impact this year uh, was actually showing this, that there is no simple, no easy, no uh, easy solution, solution yeah. to, to, to reach a sustainable energy pathway. Mm, different technologies, different policies need to be in place in order to get to that pathway. Um, so efficiency needs to to improve much faster than what we have been uh, observing in the last years. Uh, renewables also need to step up further. And other technologies, uh, CCUS, um, electrification will need to happen, um, hydrogen. Uh, so all of these combined, depending on the sector we are talking about, of uh, region we are talking about, uh, we looked at this in detail and that's what we, we see. So basically, um, we're going to need, and this is actually the model we are using right now, we try to use, to produce power from different, uh, different kind of sources. And the focus is on renewables, of course. Mm -hmm. And yet, uh, solar power and wind power are not going to be able to cover that much and that fast because the, it's not efficient. I was talking to Simon Harris before. Uh, they are intermittent. How, how, um, how soon are we going to be able to have renewable sources overcome as a, as a percentage the, the fossil fuels? So uh, you are completely right. Um, first of all, there are regions in the world where still coal and gas are still the predominant uh, sources of electricity and are projected to do so even in the future. But it's true, solar PV and wind also are projected to grow very fast. And this is why one of the uh, key areas and key uh, points to take into account is flexibility of power systems. Why? Because in the past, flexibility has always been there always been tackled, but in the past, what was variable was demand. Demand, it's unpredictable yeah. in some ways, so you need the flexibility to adjust the demand and supply and to have them always balanced. But when variable renewables, such as solar and wind, become more and more important, 
then flexibility also will grow much faster. This is what we, we, we see, that flexibility needs will become crucial yeah. to, to make sure that the lights stay on. That's why we say electricity security yeah, is yeah. really crucial today because electricity is being used everywhere and also because uh, solar and wind are going. We are, we are dependent on electricity. We cannot basically have an urban life without electricity. And um, in your scenarios, uh, how big is the increase in the coming years of electricity use, of power use, uh, since we are talking about uh, the increase of the uh, electric vehicles, for example. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have more and more, uh, let's say, products that use electricity. Yes. So, so in our scenario, electricity grows and grows much faster than the overall energy demand. I'm saying this because energy demand also will, will grow due to growing population, uh, yeah. having more more people in, in the planet, a growing economy, etc. But electricity will grow much faster than that. As you, you yeah. rightly said, why? Because there is digitalization, so everyone has smartphones and uh, all these electronic appliances. Uh, electric vehicles will uh, become more and more popular, uh, but also for other reasons that we might not think of. Yes. Cooling. Cooling oh, is yeah. one of that. Cooling demand in uh, some regions, uh, Southeast Asia, India, will, uh, will increase really str strongly. And this is why cooling is something that we have to look carefully at. And then, of course, there are many other, uh, many, many other applications. Uh, but that's why also we see that if in the past, um, in the past uh, um, 18 years, uh, oil was the, uh, the source used to, uh, to supply most of the energy demand growth, for the future, we see a shift. It's not going to be any more oil. It's going to be electricity. Electricity. Um, do you think there is a possible solution or one of the solutions to have, uh, to have solar panels on, on houses in towns? Because this was a, um, an idea that was discussed, I think, for many years. Mm -hmm. And yet, we, we, we are not there yet. And is it because of the technology? Do we need, maybe we need the better solar panels? Or do we need to have the grid uh, to be able to get all that power that you don't need during the day? It's a combination of things. Uh, in the past years, we have seen that uh, solar PV has, uh, has experienced strong cost, cost reductions. Um, that's true. But it's also yes, true so. that cost reductions have been uh, driven also by policies. Why I'm saying this is that uh, solar PV in uh, residential buildings have, um, how you say, um, can be competitive and financially viable if certain policies and regulations are in place. If uh, you household, you don't get paid enough for the electricity that you consume, and you maybe you, you don't store, you just, uh, uh, just use it, you yeah, use it, it goes. or you have to, to inject it in the grid, then it will not be competitive to you to install it. So, of course, it's a matter of economics of the technology, but it's also a matter of economics for the consumer, and these. Uh, also depends on the regulation that is in place. So in some regions this might be uh, possible and competitive, in some other cases this is not and maybe will not. That's why we all we, we, we stress the point that policies, regulations and market design uh, are very, very important. As far as mm, international energy agen agency knows, um, how, how open are, are the authorities, the governments, to help building this kind of, of network, this kind of grid? Because, as you said, it's an mm -hmm. economic issue. And yes. sometimes they say, well, we don't have money enough to subsidize 
uh, all the solar panels we need? It, it really depends on the, on the region, I would say, uh, on the priorities that the region has. Uh, it's true, I mean, uh, what we have seen in the past for Germany, uh, also Italy, China, uh, some other regions are coming, uh, US with the ITC, the tax credit. Um, uh, so it really depends on the, on the priority. But this is why we, are, we, push, we, we stress and push the importance of uh, policy makers. Yeah, policy makers. Yeah. And what do you think of technology? Do you think we're going to see a breakthrough in the future? Um, in the batteries, for example, in uh, we, the, the solar panels. I, I know that Tesla is working on a solar panel that it's a lot easier to install than a classic one. We, I mean, as a, as International Energy Agency, we, we constantly follow what's happening in technologies. And I mean, we have been uh, seeing uh, notable uh, technology improvements as far as solar PV, Batteries, but not only uh, wind. Wind yeah. turbines have been uh, uh, have become uh, much much more efficient in the past few years. Offshore wind turbine is something that maybe we d we don't talk too much about, but there have been a lot That's of Im efficiency improvements uh, in many technologies, and this is also why then uh, deployment has been uh, has been ramping up. Of course, policies of uh, countries and technology also, by consequence, hand. have been improving the you know, economic of, of scale, etc. Okay. Hopefully, the policies cannot stop technology to, to develop. And uh, that is a reassuring thought, at least for the future. Thank you very much. Thank and uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to see each other again. Thank you very much. Thank you, too, for watching.